Hello everyone, I am Samiksha and welcome to The Samiksha Show. Every week we get to you fascinating conversations with people from diverse background. This week today with us we have Lisa who is a mechanical engineering student from Switzerland. Lisa is currently on an exchange program here in the vibrant city of Hong Kong. With a passion for technology and love to explore different cultures, she is balancing out between exploring Hong Kong and balancing her studies. So Lisa, how has it been so far? How is it going? Oh, it's going good. It's going well. It's been a, a very adventurous few weeks, few months, why, I think. Why adventurous? It was a very, it's a very new environment. So just coming here, it's been very, so many new things. I've never been to a city that's this big and like that has this many people, mm -hmm. this many things happening at the same time. Uh, we went to China, so I did travel a bit. Then like all the new people I met during the studies, but also like throughout the exchange program. So it's been very active in comparison to my time in Switzerland and it, it's been amazing. I really like it. So in, if you were in Switzerland, what kind of activities would you usually go to as compared to what you're doing in Hong Kong? It really depends on what time span. I think the last two years, because I was doing my bachelor's degree yes. at UPFL, I studied. I studied a lot. I think my, <laughs> my main my main, actually, I think I spent every day the same way. I just like woke up in the morning. I went on campus. I studied. Maybe in the evening I did some sports, um, and then I went back home to sleep. And that's kind of the whole. That's almost. I think that's kind of. Yeah, that summarizes my whole experience mm -hmm. at UPFL. Um, and so here it's been really nice because I've had time to do more sports, to do activities, to go to the city, and really explore some places, which I didn't really do in Switzerland. So why did you choose to come to Hong Kong? This, like, you could have gone any other place. I think I really wanted to leave Switzerland and go far away to just explore a new place because mm -hmm. I feel like it's such a nice opportunity to see a new country, a new culture, just something that you wouldn't wouldn't usually do. And so I looked around and I feel like Hong Kong. I didn't expect it to be this nice of a mix of a city and the nature and everything. And so when I saw that there was this like really big city, but also this like amazing nature around it. I, I was convinced and I just, yeah, so I applied for Hong Kong. Yeah, I when I came to Hong Kong, I didn't know that it has so much of nature yeah. and so many hiking spots to go to. Yeah, me I neither. Didn't. Because uh, the city I came from in India has no hiking. I'd never done any oh. hiking. Oh wow, did you do many going. hikes here then? Like, uh, you? A few. Okay. I wouldn't say many because obviously academics are there. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, I was surprised by how intense it is here. For so yeah, yeah. So why? <laughs> like, how is academics different? Oh, so I would say I think the biggest difference is that here it's quite competitive. Hmm. I think at EPFL we don't have. Do you think the competition is healthy? I don't think it is. I, I feel like it's a very. Sometimes I think it's a bit toxic because students don't really support each other. I've seen few, a few people that really support each other, which is nice. I've heard that there's many students, though, that kind of separate themselves. And I feel like that's, yeah, and I feel like that's such a sad thing. I feel like it's a nice motivation because there's competition. You want to succeed and you want to study. And it kind of advances the whole study process. But at the same time, I feel like it creates so many negative emotions against like your friends actually and the people you're close to um, and that was nice at EPFL I think that's kind of one of the things I think I would say I preferred at EPFL um, is that we really didn't have that competition because there was no certain amount of people that would get an A, B, C. Oh, um, then how was it then? Um, there was kind of usually the professors they decided on what they wanted to see in students for them to pass. Mm. So they looked at the they looked at the students, what everybody did, and then they just decided, okay, let's say, I don't know, forty percent is the pass grade, like the passing grade, mm. uh, and then they would see how many people passed, how many didn't pass, and sometimes adapt the curve. So there was a curve sometimes. Uh, I think often they pushed the grades towards um, better grades because the average was quite low. Um, but there was no 
given percentage of students that would get, for example, a 6 or a 5.5, which is our grading scale, so we go from 1 to 6. Um, and I would say that that was an advantage. We still did have a lot of pressure because it was quite difficult to pass the classes. Uh, again, because sometimes they just didn't really adapt the curve that much. And so there was 60, 70% that failed the class. And so you didn't want to be one of these people. Um, you also told me that they had uh, something to do with like one year of trial period and then they might need to repeat the first year. Yeah, we have kind of a special system. Um, the first year it's the it's um, a year in which all of the different sections and all of the different faculties, they have very similar classes. Mm -hmm. So we do lots of basic physics, basic math. Um, and then after the first semester, there's the exams and you have this first block of subjects, so mathematics and physics. And if you don't pass these subjects with a certain grade, you can go to a special mathematics course. So you have to repeat your first year before you repeat the first year, you go into a special course that teaches you the basics and the foundation, foundations of mathematics and physics, uh, which is a nice way actually to catch up and kind of the get basics. the basics again. Um, and then after the first year, again, you have exams. We always have exams after each semester, like here. Um, and then if after the first year you don't pass, you just repeat the year. Um, it's uh, kind of similar to Hong Kong because in uh, the first year that we had here, we also had to take basic courses to see yeah. which... So do you guys already have a major when you enter high school? Yes. Or actually, we don't have. That, so that was a big surprise. I heard yeah. that here you choose the major I'm afterwards. Yeah. But how, how does it work? You just start studying and then you can choose so, anything? Yeah, just like that when we enter, we kind of have some things in mind what we might like. And then we try to try it out in our first year. Some people come with a declared major, depending on if they are Jupus entry or or some direct entry. But mostly people come with some ideas in mind, but then they take courses to see whether they actually want to go in that direction or not. And there have been a lot of people who thought they would like, let's say, computer engineering, but end up not liking it and taking something else. Oh, but that is really nice it is. because it gives you, oh, that's so nice. I think that's one of the problems at our university is that mm -hmm. quite many students start studying and they have mm -hmm. no idea what they're going to study. And it's kind of a shock when you arrive because you're yes. just like, what is this? Oh. And then um, we do have quite many students that give up, like that change, um, mm -hmm. change to a, to a but different But can they change at a later stage if they think that it's not for them? So it depends. Um, we have faculties with different majors and Sometimes if you want to change inside of your own faculty, for example, from mechanical engineering to micro, nano engineering, um, that is possible, I think, until the end of the first year with a few procedures. Um, whereas if, for example, I wanted to switch into life sciences, um, I would have had to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because I did have the basic courses in maths and physics, I probably wouldn't have had to repeat those, but um, because... Life sciences, you had to take. Yeah, so I would have had to take uh, lots of bio bi biology and chemistry courses. Um, it is not too difficult if you stay at EPFL. Mm. Uh, I do know many people that switched to other universities and then you have to start at zero again. Okay. In Hong Kong, it is very competitive. Like uh, you said that um, about um, the idea that professors have in mind for us, it's kind of like they're trying to make us compete among ourselves and uh, the top five or ten percent of the class would get uh, an A range. Then uh, the ones who are performing average, they would get a B range and rest would get a C range and someone who never shows up gets a D range. And that actually pushes, especially in that first year thing. So when it's undeclared, then there's also a kind of uncertainty that students have. Like, for example, if someone wants to enter into computer sciences, they say that you require like a very high GPA, like 3.8 or something out of 4.3. And I've heard students like studying day and night in the learning commons just to like achieve that particular oh, wow. major. So it also kind of makes you work a bit too extra hard, which is not required sometimes. Oh, that's interesting. I do feel like competition is... I, I've seen it. It's a nice motivator. Like people yeah. study a lot, but, but only if you take it in the right way. Yes, yeah. I think no, there's like should a not limit. affect your health or something. Yes, I think you have to be able to take the stress, not mm -hmm. on a personal level. 
How do you handle stress? Oh, good question. <laughs> um, I think it depends on the type of stress. Yeah. Um, I think usually when I get stressed academically, I just I fall into my study rhythm, which means I get up every single day at the same time. I study. I go to bed. You routine yourself. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because that helps me a lot to handle handle mm -hmm. like the pressure. And I think that's for me. It's personally a very good way to handle the stress. Even though I maybe should do a bit more sports in these uh, intervals of time, so for example revisions, um, to keep up like my healthy healthy mind. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, sometimes there's situations where I'm stressed in a way that there's too many, too many new things. Coming to your mind. And that has happened to me in Hong Kong. I've realized that there was like after the beginning, like after the first few weeks, I realized there there were so many people, so many people that I met, so many things happening, and I kind of, I think I kind of shut down for a few days and I just stayed in my room and I kind of calmed down, um, and it did help me a lot to I think release some of the stress. Eating Calm dark down. chocolate also helps. Oh, for chocolate! That one. Yeah. Chocolate is great. I yesterday I ate a whole bar of chocolate <laughs> <laughs> because I was stressed because of my applications, and so I. It does help. Mm. Chocolate is great. How difficult is it to get in in Switzerland for jobs and internships? Like you're applying for some internships at this stage, right? Yes. So how many? Like, what do you expect? Are you going to hear back, or how difficult would it be? So usually. If you apply for a company internship mm. um, with only a bachelor's, mm. um, if you have time to do six months internship, it's not that difficult mm. because they like taking students that have a bachelor's because they do have a basic and education. And then create a base so exactly. that they are. And so for six months or more, it's I think it's quite easy. If you put in the work, mm. you apply to companies, you write good motivation letters, it's doable. Uh, however, I'm applying for summer internships, and that's a different thing because it's only for two or three months. Mm -hmm. And so especially companies, they're not very interested because they don't see the potential or they don't see the, their profit in taking a student that has no practical experience. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a bit difficult. I kind of have decided to apply to more laboratories in universities. So you would go to the research direction? Yes, exactly. So are you interested in it, or is it just because it's difficult to get into companies? I am interested in research. I think at the moment I'm very undecided if I want to go more into research. Have you ever tried research? No, no. You That's can try actually. Yeah. Oh, you yes. can reach out to professors and like if they have some something you could help with, they would reach out to you. I heard of that. I have a friend who's doing this in a yeah. laboratory here and he's really enjoying it. I think at the moment I don't really have the time because I have so many other projects going on. I was thinking of applying for next semester. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think that the summer internship, if I do it in research, it's going to be nice to see what the if environment is like. like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If I'm interested. In Hong Kong, uh, the job market is very competitive. I heard that some jobs are kind of reserved for certain people with certain background, but. Sometimes it's not even about that because they have 1,000 or 2,000 candidates applying and they have to select like 5 or 10. So it actually makes it even difficult for them. But I think it's a very good idea to have a good resume and be good at like speaking on a yes. video interview and also in a face-to-face -face interview. So have you prepared in any way like for your upcoming internships? Yes, so I do have an interview on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, is it a video? Laboratory. Obviously, a video. Interview. Yes, it's a video interview. So it's for a laboratory um, at a Swiss university, mm -hmm. and I always feel like academia, the, the people are very relaxed. Yes. So I sent an email that was very polite, and like with a motivation letter, with my CV, um, everything very square and polite. Yes. And then I received an email back that was like, "Yeah, sure, let's talk, let's chat on Tuesday." Um, and so I'm very unsure how to prepare. I've started reading some scientific articles of the laboratory mm -hmm. to be able to see what they're doing and to understand what research they're doing. Um, also to get some ideas what I want to do. Because I do know that they propose some internships in mechanical but also in other disciplines. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to kind of have an idea of um, what would be cool to do. Uh, and then I think I'll just... I'll read the research papers, try to maybe prepare some questions that I have for the laboratory because I'm not even I'm not sure yet if I want to go into that laboratory and then see what happens. What would you what about the laboratory would attract you? Like what would you why would you choose it? So it is a rehabilitation laboratory. Hmm. 
and I'm very interested in biomedical engineering. So it's a really nice way to kind of enter the interdisciplinary field. Yes. Um, because for mechanical or for my studies, I've only done pure physics, mathematics, calculations. I've never done an applied project or an interdisciplinary project. Um, and so it's really nice to have the possibility to enter into the interdisciplinary field. Um, I think the disadvantage of the laboratory is that it's the project would probably be focused on product development. And I'm currently thinking of going into robotics and control prints, like control systems and control engineering, and it would not be very connected to control engineering. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the worries I have with the internship. Uh, even though product development is still a very nice field, and I would be so happy to be able to develop something. Uh, you are really someone who tries out a lot, right? Because you came from mechanical engineering background. You're kind of taking aerospace engineering courses here and you want to try out biomedical engineering in the future. So what like what makes you try out different stuff? Like I think it's curiosity. It is curiosity. I think it's so nice to see the different fields that exist and to see the applications of engineering. Because I'm somebody who's I like mathematics. I'm a very I'm a big nerd. And so to kind of see where you can apply these mathematics, it's so cool. And Actually, it wasn't intentional that I took aerospace courses. I just took courses that I was interested in, oh. and I later on realized that they were they are all of them were aerospace <laughs> courses. Um, but it's so cool because I did think about going into aerospace when I was younger, and so it's nice to see this side. But then I think it's also just nice to discover other ways to apply uh, the engineering knowledge. And I think the nice thing about the bachelor's education usually is that you get a very basic knowledge. And so for the masters and for the jobs afterwards, you can do anything. You can kind of apply the knowledge wherever you want to. And so at the moment, I'm happy to experience different fields. So this was all your uh, studies and how did you like enjoy the study life here. How about your traveling and exploring Hong Kong culture? How do you like the people, food and culture in Hong Kong? So I think because I live on campus, mm -hmm. the culture I've experienced is mainly the study campus culture. Life. Yeah, so the campus life. Mm -hmm. And I love the campus life. The campus life is great. I feel like there's so many different things to do. Um, then the, I think I've been to the city. What kind of things have you tried on campus? Oh I've, oh, I've tried many sports. I think at the moment I'm in my sports phase. I go to the gym quite regularly. We okay. did squash, we did tennis. Um, I think my friends, they're going to try um, is it windsurfing? Yeah, I tried applying as well. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't get in. Uh, there's so many different sports, and also, oh yeah, table tennis, ping pong. Are um, you good at it? No. I was oh, so I'm bad even when I tried the first time. Oh, no, but I now I think that. I'm not great, but I'm still trying. Yeah, I enjoy it though. It's so nice. Also, like I feel. Like you can always meet different students anywhere on campus. Yes. Or whenever I go to the library, I talk do you think to people students. are like engaging? Do they interact well? I think they are. I, I didn't expect it because from what I read from experiences of people, uh, the culture was a bit more introverted. Introverted. Yeah, yes. Okay. But I feel like from what I've experienced is that if you go up to people, everybody is so nice. And yes. so at the moment, I feel like everywhere I go, I can just talk to a few people, and it's such a nice experience. Yeah. Do you think they can speak English well? Because uh, I personally had an experience where I went to a place and I kind of got lost when I just arrived in Hong Kong and there was no one who spoke English. But apart from that experience, I've never faced any difficulty with language. Did you ever have any experience? I think in Hong Kong itself, it was. I've been very positively surprised. Um, I feel like everybody kind of spoke English, like the basic knowledge, or at least the knowledge that was necessary to communicate. So for example, in a store you can ask how much something costs and they'll be able to tell you in English. Uh, even at the market, I was really surprised you could really like talk in English with the vendors. Um, I think the, the bigger shock was when we went to, to China, because there nobody spoke English. We were in regions that, even though they were touristic, I think it was still how very How did you manage then? Google Translate, okay. it, very much so. I think there's like this communication feature in Google Translate that you can use, so you, people can talk into the into the speakerphone. You can kind of have conversations with Google Translate, and it works really well. So I've used this. In but can you use well. Google in uh, China? Because I heard some people couldn't use it. Uh, the translator worked. Yes, I'm not sure. 
it was a VPN. Was maybe it? it was because of the VPN. I think I had a VPN on. Okay. Um, but usually it worked. There was no problems. How do you think um, is the food, Asian food? Oh, uh, so I enjoy Asian food, but I think I do have... Which cuisines are your favorite? Oh, oh, that's so difficult. I don't know if I have a favorite cuisine. I know that, well, I do have a dietary restriction, mm -hmm. so I'm celiac, which means I can't eat gluten. Um, so Chinese food is very difficult, and also local food here I can't really eat, so the canteens I can eat nothing. Um, so you cook more of? I cook a lot, and so I think to be honest, the comfort food is Indian food because <laughs> Indian food is very really? often gluten free. Yes. What, what did you try? Oh, oh. And did you cook or did you get it from outside? So here I've been getting it from restaurants because it does take many spices and I don't have the spices. Okay. At home I used to cook sometimes for myself, but it was not as good as the restaurants. Yeah. Um, I love oh, so many different things. I think there's like. Mata paneer? Yes. Which is so good. Oh, anything with paneer I will love. Also chicken, lamb. Paneer curries. is cottage cheese. Yes, and it's so good. I, I, I love paneer. Um, there's, to be honest, I think I, I like almost anything as, as long as it's like, usually in info for me it's like very warm. And it's like this, this kind of comforting, um, really fulfilling meal and I don't think I've ever had something that I didn't like, actually. So yeah. I also love Indian food, and because I'm Indian, I also know the very like quick recipes that we make for breakfast, like uh, khichdi, dalia, and all. And then it's very nutritious and healthy. Yeah. What's your What's your go-to meal when you um, have to cook here? Curd rice. I make a lot of curd rice because it's you just make rice, and then add curd to it and some salt, and then. Uh, if you have curry leaves, it's good if you could add like uh, in hot oil, you add curry leaves and then put the curd rice in it. Mm -hmm. Just the rice first, then after that add curd to it. It's it's very comforting and it's very healthy because curd is very good for your body. Oh nice! Oh, I'll try that sometime. I've, yeah. never, I've never had that actually. Yeah. Ooh, it sounds good. So, how do you think this exchange experience will fit in your career? How would it help you? I think it's a an amazing experience to learn how to integrate yourself and how to go out of your comfort zone. Uh, also talk with people that are just culturally different, that maybe have their own friend groups and don't know you and are maybe a bit skeptical. And are just they go open to, them. to accept you as a friend? Uh, because I felt like some friends group, they can be a bit closed, so it's difficult to Yes, I think it's always the case. If there's there's always a few friends gr friend groups that are just kind of closed, closed. off, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's still a nice experience to go try and talk to anybody and see yeah see how they react. And I'm personally somebody who is I think I've struggled a bit with going up to groups of people, especially I I think I know quite well how to go up to individual people and talk to yes. them, but then to go up to groups it's quite difficult. And I think this experience here has given me the kind of the the routine to just go to people, talk to them, um, also the country, the different language, just the new environment. I think it helps you a lot to adapt to different situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and because you're alone and without your family, I feel like it's it's kind of a, a training to become more adult. So yes, also academically speaking, I think an exchange is always a nice opportunity because yes. companies, research laboratories, they'd love to see that you invested your energy, that you went to a different university, you learned in different ways. So I think it's... I talked to a professor and he said that it's actually a good thing to add on your CV because, because it shows that you can adjust with diverse cultures and diverse environments, collaborate with people and also communicate well because different it's people have different communication techniques. It's true, yes. I think it's... In general, an exchange is always a great opportunity, not only for the career, but especially also for the career. It's it's just great. And also personal development. Yes. Oh, exactly. I've been trying to like do personal growth, write in my diary about my exchange. Uh, I feel like it's <laughs> a great opportunity. <laughs> uh, what career advice or what advice, just advice, would you give to someone who's looking for to come to Hong Kong for exchange? Oh, 
I think, oh, there's many different ones. <laughs> I think kind of the first one, when you do your luggage, is just not take too many things. Because I took two whole bags of luggage, and the rooms are quite small, so yes. it's difficult to fit everything yeah. in. Um, but then I think it's just to be open, to kind of not close off your mind and just stay with the things you know, but to go up to new people, to leave the campus also, which I'm trying to do currently, uh, to do activities, to go travel, um, and I think also to not focus too much on the academics, because there's so many different ways to learn, and I think, especially when you come from EPFL, you've spent so much time studying, academically speaking, and you haven't really had time to focus on yourself, on sports, on just other types of learning that you can do also in your life. And I feel like Hong Kong is the perfect environment to go to sports, uh, to spend time with friends, also to maybe learn things by your own, like go to library and study things that you're interested in instead of just doing the subjects you have to do that are required by the university. So yeah. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us thank today. You. It was a pleasure to have you. And thank you guys for tuning in. If you like the content, then please like and sh uh, like, share, and subscribe to the Samiksha Show. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How was it?